Well, now we got uh, the legendary Rod Woodson joining us here on the Tomahawk Podcast here at Super Bowl week for Minnesota. Rod, how you doing? I'm doing good, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. It's great when you're at Radio Row and you see all these former players, these former greats, Hall of Famers, everybody just kind of walking around, and you grab them and you say, hey, why don't you come over here and tell, <laughs> tell us about what's going on today? So you're just finishing a little stint as a coach. You enjoyed your time in Oakland for a little while? Last four years with the, in Oakland. Um, this last year wasn't as great as we had two years ago, yeah, but, right. you know, uh, it's it was fun. Mm -hmm. You know, when you play, you know, I played 17 years in the National Football League, and <laughs> then you start coaching, you think, uh, do I really want to do this? Yeah. And I really enjoyed it, just for the fact that I, I got to give what was given to me as a player mm -hmm. back to the guys. Because yeah. I think the foundation, I think the fundamentals of the game mm -hmm. has gone to the wayside. Really? Um, yeah. At certain positions, yeah. not all positions, yeah. but at certain positions. And... I want to give that back. Yeah. And it was fun to do that. You know, I had some uh, good, a good group of guys yeah. in Oakland. Uh, just unfortunately, this past year, we couldn't get it done. Yeah, yeah. How much do you think the game has changed on defense, schematically, blitzes, coverages, from when you played to where it is right now? I, I think the biggest difference, like when I first came in, it was more 70% run. Mm -hmm. mm. And then it turned into 70% pass by the end time. Well, I would say about 60% pass by the time I got done. Because I, I finished up in 03. Today, it's really you're playing a run and shoot. You know, I played against a run and shoot in, in the AFC Central and mm -hmm. Warren Moon or Houston Oilers were going at it. Well, it's third down football all the time <laughs> for the most part. I mean, a lot of teams don't even have fullbacks on the roster. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll take tight ends and put them in the backfield for the fullback. So I think the biggest change is just the spread, the, the spread concept mm -hmm. from the offense. Mm -hmm. And then defensively, it's just the rule changes. Yeah. You know, quarterbacks are overly protected in the pocket, out of the, out of the pocket. You have uh, um, or, um, defenseless re receivers going down the shoot. You can't hit them high. You can't hit them low. Well, you can hit them low, which is, doesn't really make sense. Right. You know, because I'd rather hit, have you hit me in the head yeah. than take my knee out. Yeah. That was the one thing I think that the NFL needs to take a look at is hitting defenseless receivers low, especially those guys that they're turned towards the quarterback and somebody's coming in from behind. I think that's a more dangerous play almost to your career than hitting you in the head. Absolutely. I think if you did a poll with all the receivers and tight ends in the National Football League and say, do you want to get hit when you're going on the shoot, you turn turning back and looking for the ball, get hit high or get hit in the knees? I think it's going to be the vast majority to say yeah. get hit high. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. But, I mean, that's going to, like, I would like to hear your perspective. Once you get to an older point, right, like, so right now, yes, I would rather get hit up high than low because it preserves my career. But then once you get a little older, you leave football and you, you might start to feel the effects. Like we've heard the horror stories. You then know, I don't. Where does your mind go? I, I, I don't know. I, I've been forgetting stuff for a long time. <laughs> so long before That's what I say. say. <laughs> That's like it's been okay for me. Like I'm, I, 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 I forgot my keys uh -huh. when I was 21. Yeah. Right, right, you know, right. Where did I yeah. put my keys? Right. Where, where, yeah. They're like right there. Like, yeah. where's my cell phone? I'm yeah. talking on my cell phone. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. I just, you know, yeah. for me, I don't think it's a uh, – um, a big deal, but I think it's a big deal for the fact that, you know, the players sued their owners. Yeah. And they want to know, and more so they sued because of the knowledge not being shared, yeah. not of the consequences that were resulted in playing. Right. Because I think, hey, I would still play. Yeah. Yeah. If you would have gave me all that knowledge, yeah. I'm going to go, I'm playing ball. Right. I've been playing football my whole life. Yep. My whole life, everything I have in my life, everything that I accomplished in my life, I got from football. Yep. Being either playing it, talking about it yeah. or coaching it yeah that's all i know yeah yeah you know it's in my blood so all players want is the opportunity to have the information that you uncovered and and you give them that and say make the decision make your decision yeah. i think you're exactly right it's not so much the consequence as it is you had the information and you didn't present it to us in a timely right. way so we can say yo we want to do it or we don't want to do it i played seven years in the league two in canada I have a cousin. I grew up in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's Western Pennsylvania, so Rod Woodson is like it when you grew up <laughs> where I grew up, right? So, and on this show, we talk about like player stories and my, you know, my time in the locker room, his time in the locker room. I have a cousin that played with you in Pittsburgh that I get a lot of stories about. I don't know if you have one, but his name is Carlton Hasselrig. <laughs> he was a, <laughs> Yeah. He oh, was that a, guy. <laughs> oh, I'm out of here. Anybody who doesn't, Carlton didn't play college football. He was a wrestler. Yep. He won six national championships, the only guy to ever do it because he wrestled Division II and Division I. Wow. And won both national. And he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers 
and played his stint there. He was a baller, man. He was a he's the best athlete in my family, and I tell and no one <laughs> knows who like they don't. Dude, well, now they should be playing the NFL. I tell people all the time the best nose tackle that I remember is Carlton because really the dude was like that. he was like. And I know Sam Adams and Tony Saragusa are going to be mad at me for saying that, but <laughs> he was like this huge, like, he's not real tall. No. But he's so stout, mm. and he got up under the center. He was so strong. You weren't moving him. You were not moving him in that middle. And yeah. when you run a 3-4, yeah. it's predicated that your nose tackle is a beast. Right. Yeah. And he was a beast. I mean, that guy would just constantly – make the way for our backers getting in and out. And he was yep. like the unsung hero because he wasn't making a lot of plays like on the ball, so to yep. speak. But when he had to, man, I do, he would cause havoc. So he played defensive line and offensive line for the Pittsburgh Steelers really? while he was there. Yeah, but he was like one of those guys that he could just, I don't know, but he was crazy. Like, well, it's time. He was like, he's the scariest <laughs> dude in my town. You know, and he, he coaches football now, and he, he always talks about it. I asked him, I said, what, what th one thing you miss about, about playing in the league? And he was like, I miss throwing guys who are bigger than me around like I, like they couldn't do nothing about it. And I was like, that's a scary thing to say. But, but I could see it because he was so strong. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to see him do it, right, and go, wow, that, man, he just threw that little dude like that. <laughs> <laughs> he weighed nothing. And he was a 300-pound yeah. center or, yeah. or, or guard. Yeah. I mean, he, he did it consistently well. That's and amazing. I mean, the one thing I, 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 we talk about when we get together, all, the old Steelers, we always talk about him just for the fact that Man, he caused so much havoc, and nobody knew his name. Yeah, that's wild. Like, who is he? They'd be like, uh, all the fans had no idea unless you were a real Pittsburgh right, fan. Right, right, right. Yeah. But then we knew who he was because, man, he would cause havoc on the opposing offense. That's amazing. Who, you, who do you got this Super Bowl? What's your prediction? Who do you, who do you feel like is going to come out on top? You know, everybody's going with the New England mystique yep. and what they've accomplished and Bill Belichick and Tom Brady – they're pretty good, though. Yeah. <laughs> they are pretty good. They're crazy. But you know what? I really believe that Philly has a great shot to win this thing. Yeah. Just for the fact they can run the football. Mm -hmm. We all know Foles needs to take care of the ball. We know that. I think he needs to get a couple unscheduled first downs with his feet because they run so many RPOs. There are more RPOs in the National Football League than any other team. Mm -hmm. So, But he doesn't keep it that often. Yeah. Where Wentz, yeah. on the other hand, he would keep that thing. Right. Yeah which causes a lot of havoc for a defense because yeah. you can't really – you don't put that in your game plan when quarterbacks are running around getting first downs with their feet. Mm -hmm. So I think he needs, to keep, he needs to keep a couple of those RPOs and go around the, on the wide side of the field or the short side of the field a couple of times. But it's going to be predicated on the defensive front. They have to get pressure on Tom Brady up the middle. They can't blitz from outside on Tom Brady. Yeah. He sees it. He's seen everything. But if you can do it in the middle, and Swartzy understands that, he doesn't blitz a lot anyway. They're going to be in more single high looks more so than anything. And the back end, those guys, nobody really knows who those guys are. But those guys have played really, really well together. No, they definitely have. So I, I, I'm i giving them a shot to win it. And I think they can upset them by three points. Mm. I like it. Now, Rod, how many Pro Bowls did you make? I made 11. Oh. And, and Joe's made That's 10. And out. I, Joe's made Got 10. Me. On the show, he's told a lot of good Pro Bowl stories. What is your best Pro Bowl story? That's a good question. Oh, are we clean? No. no this, no, is, yeah. this is not this is regular no, 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 TV okay. here. No, I gotta it's say an uninterrupted I have, story. Yeah. Okay, I have a kids, and I'm a man of faith, so I'm going to keep it clean. <laughs> yeah, right, keep it as clean as you can. So it, it, it's morphed over the years, right? So it you has. had, you know, it's, it went from the Hilton Hawaiian Village when, I, when we first started going out there in, uh, in Hawaii to the Iolani, yep. which was really nice because – when you're young and single and you want your, you know, you, you want to fill your loins, yeah. you want to be at the Hilton Hawaiian Village because <laughs> everybody was down there. Yeah. I mean, everybody was down there. Because that was in Waikiki, right? That's in Waikiki. So that's right in Honolulu. So it's like right there in the heart of everything. And, and people just flocked out to the Pro Bowl all the time because they knew they could stay with the players right there. Yeah. And then as you got older, when you got a little more mature, you wanted to morph into the Iolani, which uh -huh. is this big, beautiful place out, you know, not North Shore, but going out, I think, north. It's like the west east, side. West side? It's like the southwest side. side. See, Other side go. of the island from Wild. I'm not good with maps. All right? <laughs> so he, you're going out that way, but only people that can be on that property yeah. was you had to be in the NFL. Yeah. So it was only NFL people. Right. So it's kind of morphed over the years. But, you know, the one thing I love about the Pro Bowl is that, like when we played, the and I don't know if it still is that the winner gets more money. Yes, okay. they get double actually. Oh, they get double now. Yeah. Now, oh, they it, cheated us. It was only like ten thousand more. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> so, 
we would play all, like everybody would say, hey, the first, first half, don't hurt each other. Second half, I remember Bill Cower coming in going, hey, we get paid more money if we win this thing than if we lose, and I need to break even at the Pro Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and we went, out, we went out there, and, then, and you don't post a blitz, and one of our backers might read the pass or read it run, and he yeah. keeps going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to stay in the middle of the field uh -huh. until they throw the football, and they would go to, like, split safety. It's automatic. You know, like, hey, we didn't mean to do that. Uh -huh. Oops. So everything that we would try to do to win the game late in the year, or late in that game, excuse me, they were trying to get done because you want to win, and you want to have that little hanging over your buddy across yeah. this field. You want to say, hey, yeah. we beat you. We were better that week, and yeah. we got more money. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the only way you come away without losing money at the Pro Bowl. Because usually you got your parents, your siblings, your cousins, your aunt, your uncle, your coach. But now, and everybody's eating and drinking all week on your tab. Now, is it – you're in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So is it more expensive in Hawaii or in Orlando? In Hawaii, just because you got to fly everybody there, you got to put them up. Right. In, in Florida, a lot of people kind of live in that area, so they could drive yeah. or they just stay at their cheaper. house. It's a little, a little cheaper. cheaper because the cost of going there. But you do have to buy a lot more tickets for the game. And the oh, tickets are like 150 you, bucks a piece. Really? Oh, wow. they're crazy expensive. Man, this is the first guest we've had who had more Pro Bowls than Joe. Yeah. <laughs> this is a big deal for the Tomahawk podcast. I didn't even think we had uh. the, the people and the personnel to be able to get that. It's not that many guys that's been double digit. To the There's Pro not Bowls. that many. There's not that many. I, I, think, uh, I think the most I've ever heard was 13. Yeah, there was a guy yeah, was, like well, way back Anthony when. Anthony Munoz. Munoz, I want to say, had 12, 12? maybe, 11 or 12. I thought he, I know he was up there. He was in a yeah. double digit. Yeah. I think what Ray Lewis had. Ray Lewis had, I think, 11 or 12. He yeah, had, he he had quite there. a few. He was up there, too. So it's you don't, you don't get it too yeah. often. Ray was great when I played with him at the Pro Bowl because he was a guy, like, happy to just collect his check and not get hurt <laughs> in the Pro Bowl. Right. So he would go out for the very first play of the game. And oh, he would come out, and then whoever was there, he was like, you're playing the rest of the game. Put his hat on, and he was done for the day. Now, how do you – I want to ask you a question. How do you see the Pro Bowl being set up where it is and comparable to the end of the year? I liked it way better at the end of the year. Honestly, to me, the thing that ruined the Pro Bowl more than anything was putting it before the Super Bowl. That's what I thought. Because think. now all the guys that are in the Super Bowl that deserve that treat at the end of the season like it has been don't get to play. And then it gets watered down. Not not saying the guys that were the backups right. don't deserve it, but they right. weren't voted in. Yeah. You know, and so when the Super Bowl teams probably each have six guys or so that are in the Pro Bowl, all of a sudden you've wiped six guys that deserve to be in the Pro Bowl out of the game, and it just doesn't feel the same way. There's not that prestige it used to have. I right. absolutely agree with you. I, I think it should – I don't know if they could work their way back to Hawaii, but I thought it was a great yeah. caveat Yes. for a hard work year. Yep. Everybody wants to show up. Everybody wanted to go because, first of all, I was in Hawaii. Yeah. You, and it wasn't for you. No. It wasn't that I, I wanted to go to Hawaii, but I wanted to take my family. Yeah, right. So my kids, you know, we went to – they went to 11 trips to Hawaii. How awesome is that? You know, so they loved family that Family vacation stuff. every yeah. year, plan. Oh, yeah. Put it, it on the it, calendar. It maybe. was planned. It was there. So I, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. I would love to see it go back Great. the way it used to be. Well, hey, we really appreciate you coming on. We don't Guys, want to waste all it, your time. It's been a great it's an pleasure honor. meeting it's you. It's an honor. An honor. 20, 21 Pro Bowls between us. 21. Yeah. <laughs> 21 Pro Bowl Tomahawk <laughs> podcast. You're yeah. looking at us. We're greatness right now. Appreciate you joining us. My pleasure.